So welcome everybody. The topic that we're discussing today is uh, gay men having image body issues. Um, and we're fortunate to have um, Gregory Johnson with us from the Center for Relationship and um, Sexual Health. And he's gonna walk us through a presentation that he's put together. And then at the end, we'll have a uh, question and answer period. So um, with that, just to give you guys some information about Gregory, um, he has extensive experience working in the LGBTQIA community. Uh, Gregory works from a holistic perspective using various therapeutic modalities, including uh, dialectic behavioral therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, and motivational interviewing. He's passionate about developing a targeted treatment plan to assist clients with various challenges toward embracing and taking action on a life worth living. His clients include individuals, couples, families, teens and adolescents, as well as older adults. Gregory is currently completing his PhD in educational studies at Eastern Michigan, with a focus on understanding and unpacking the connection between adolescent LBGTQIA bullying, marginalization, and mental health and educational outcomes. Um, thanks for joining us today, Gregory. We appreciate uh, the presentation. Oh, thank you for having me. Happy to and be here. Well, thank you everyone for joining today. Uh, I'm Greg, by the way, Gregory Johnson, therapist at CRSH. And I brought up a topic that I really thought a lot about and seen not only as a gay man myself, but clients as well, dealing with these issues over and over again. So the topic I've uh, brought up to discuss is gay men have body image issues. So hopefully this is relevant to the people that are listening and it's something that I feel very passionate about sharing some of the root causes about where this is all coming from. So approximately 84% of gay men say they feel under intense pressure to have a good body. They are three times more likely than straight men to have body image issues. And only 1% stated they were very happy with their appearance. And they continue to struggle even more as they grow older. So this was taken from the 84% was taken from um, the gay magazine Attitude, and it was conducted in 2017. They did a body survey, and it was something that was really eye-opening to me and kind of springboarded the whole research that I wanted to dig into to see where this is all coming from. Um, they also identified that the percentage of men in general who experience body dissatisfaction have nearly tripled in the last 30 years. So it's definitely something that's getting more and more prevalent um, among all men. So this pressure can trigger more than just social media jealousy and hatred. Research found that social demands placed upon gay men to eat healthily and achieve a perfect body are linked to anxiety and depression and have serious mental health consequences. The National Eating Disorder Association similarly said that LGBTQ plus identified individuals experience unique stressors that may contribute to the development of an eating disorder. One such stressor is the inability to meet body image ideals within some LGBTQ plus cultural contexts. And they were specifically talking about within the gay male community. So if these issues are not addressed, queer and gay men body image issues can easily calcify into more serious mental health problems. So I pose the question of why are gay men hyper-focused on body image and looking and feeling young? So there's a social philosophy called objectification. Um, some of you guys may have heard of this, some of you may not. Um, it's the act of treating a person as objects or things, dehumanizing them and making them, quote, sexual objects instead of real people. Gay men, more so than heterosexual men, statistically tend to self-objectify and place higher importance on physical attractiveness. So they define sexual objectification as the act of treating a person as an instrument of sexual pleasure. Objectification more broadly means treating a person as a commodity or an object without regards to their personality or dignity. So like I said, um, objectification is a process by which a perceiver or someone that's looking outward adopts a purely externalized view of either the self or another a process by which a person's body becomes the main representation of that person's identity. Um, surprisingly, I found in the research that older men were more likely than younger men, gay men, 
to sexually objectify other gay men. And they said that as well, gay men were more likely than bisexual men to self sexually objectify other men. So I found that pretty interesting. So these results demonstrated that gay men objectified themselves and other men to a greater degree than did heterosexual men. Among gay men, there was a strong relationship between self-objectification and the degree to which other men were objectified. So it's kind of like this ping pong effect that you know, if you're self-objectifying, it's projected onto other people and vice versa. So research demonstrating that gay men closely attend to their own physical appearance and that of potential mates suggests that sexual orientation may influence the objectification process among men in general. There's a term that I looked up in research called gaze, G-A-Z-E. And it occurs during interpersonal exchanges or during encounters with visual media. Um, the male gaze, which was theorized by a feminist cultural critic, Berger and Mulvey, um, occurs when any viewer encounters the female or male form presented for the sole purpose of viewing. Thus, it seems plausible that gay men might experience, quote, the male gaze in a manner similar to that of women. From this, one could predict that that gay men would come to internalize this objectified view. So furthermore, research asserted that the cultural millennia of sexual objectification coaxes gay men to internalize this viewer's perspective on the body's bodily self. This is a phenomenon referred to as self-objectification. Essentially, gay men learn to evaluate their bodies from another's perspective. And that was something that really stood out to me. So, gay men learn about themselves or how to evaluate themselves, their bodily selves from other gay men, which was really interesting for me to read. Um, this externalized perspective can lead gay men to routinely monitor their body, occupy cogn occupying cognitive resources. So it can really take up a lot of your headspace. This fragmentation of consciousness can impair gay men's performance on various cognitive tasks. Other consequences of self-objectification include shame, anxiety, self-disgust, reduced physical fluidness, and increased chances of developing various physiological disorders or what they call mental health disorders. These research findings determine that they wanted to find the researchers to determine the degree to which a man self-objectifies parallels the extent to which he views others in similar objectified terms. Specifically, they wanted to examine this question as a function of sexual orientation. So among gay participants, self-objectification was positively related to the objectification of men, which I found very um, eye-opening for sure. So another term that came out in the research, and I don't know if many of you have heard of this, is the term called intra, I-N-T-R-A, minority stress. Um, some people have heard of the term minority stress. Um, so this looks at kind of the minority stress within the gay community. So for example, Grindr, the dating app, we've all heard of that, is one example of objectification. And I'm sure we've all seen this. Um, profiles on Grindr often use descriptions such as no fat or no femmes or in shape only. And I pose this question of, we would think as gay men that we would be natural allies for each other and lift each other up. But according to a lot of research and from what I've seen professionally and personally, this isn't always happening. And it's very unfortunate. And it's something that I really would like to shed some light on and um, invite questions afterwards as to if other gay men have experienced similar issues. So this type of oppression within the gay male community is described as intra-minority stress. So I just wanted to go off, not off topic, but talk about eating disorders for a minute because this is something that not only gay men struggle with, but has become a pretty large epidemic among young people um, with the whole social media age. And um, just wanted to talk a little bit about that. So 
Eating disorders and disorder, disordered eating behaviors can affect individuals with various identities. It has been found that disparities exist in certain marginalized groups, including gay men. Um, going back to the intra-minority stress model, there's another model called the minority stress model, um, which is more popularly used, um, is often used to explain mental health disparities in sexual and gender minority groups. Minority stress models assert that individuals from gay populations experience unique distal stressors, such as stigma and discrimination, and proximal stressors, such as internalized homophobia, concealment of sexual identity, which turns into, and leads to increased risk for the development of physical and mental health issues, such as poor body image and eating disorders. Um, this kind of occurrence stems from the heightened focus on physical appearance where gay men socialize, socialize images in the media and a smaller potential dating pool. So when we go out to you know, clubs or bars or pride events and as well as in the media, so in magazines and other portrayals in media, um, definitely focuses on the physical appearance of gay men which I'm sure most of you have recognized. Furthermore, stress from stigma can have a worsening effect on this exist existing negative body image. So stigma from this minority stress model perpetuates and exacerbates someone with already a negative body self image. So it really makes it much worse. Um, one suggestion that I have and that the research has shown is that gay men must be encouraged to develop supportive interpersonal connections to help them feel like they are socially accepted. So interpersonal connections are those between other people. And um, someone described it to me one day as finding your tribe. So basically finding a group of people, a group of gay men, and it doesn't have to be gay men, um, but a support system that encourages you to be your authentic self. Um, a little more in terms of the research, the role of inadequate social interactions defined as those that share the core feature of entailing real or perceived negative evaluations by others, such as what they call thwarted belongingness, which is an unmet need to belong, or negative social exchanges. These inadequate social interactions are theorized to lead to disturbances of the self, including low self-esteem and negative effect, affect which in turn triggers and perpetuates eating disorder symptoms. So dieting to enhance self-esteem and binge eating to regulate negative affect. Uh, another term for affect is your emotional state. So it's A-F-F-E-C-T. So going further more into minority stress, uh, if you look at the little caption um, picture on the side, talks about you know, different um, statements on Grindr that we see DL looking into NSA. I'm sure we've all seen those types of statements on, on Grindr and other social media platforms. Um, but another term I like to use, and we've talked, I talked about this a little earlier, describes the challenges many gay men face, which is called minority stress. And this affects the mental health and well-being of gay men as it relates to body image and aging. Minority stress is defined as the stigma, prejudice, harassment, and discrimination that LGBT people often face. It produces internal, internalized feelings like shame, which is a contributing factor to overall mental health. So it's definitely something that affects us as gay men and as a minority group and can really wreak havoc um, if left unchecked or not aware of. So the next term is something called the term mattering. So it sounds like what it is. It's the term mattering falls into play when it comes to body image. Mattering refers to the degree to which people feel they are an important part of the world around them. People with a high sense of mattering feel that others look up to them, seek their advice and care what happens to them. So it's very important. It's how we matter to other people. And as gay men, I think to expand upon not just how we look or how we're perceived as to how we look, 
but to matter for other ways um, outside of our physical appearance, I think is important. So really what I work with clients on, not just gay male clients, but teenagers and adults, is to find happiness within yourself. So I know this is a cliche, but you need to be happy with yourself and love yourself and not be consumed about how, what other people think of you to an extent. So as a therapist, I see clients experience this over and over again. And what I do is when I'm creating a treatment plan or trying to find a diagnosis, I work with clients to identify what are called the root causes of their low self-esteem or body image. Some come from their past, and many times it often does come from their childhoods. So what happened in your childhood that's impacting you today? Were you bullied? Were you, you know, was there other forms of abuse that were going on that may have projected and created this negative self-image that you may be struggling with? Another cliche, which I'm horrible at, is we cannot change the world, but we can change ourselves. So it really starts with the individual, is what I suggest to people listening um, that are struggling with these issues. So start valuing and validating yourself. Instead of worrying about how you look or how you are aging, focus on looking good for your age or looking and being healthy uh, to focus on just the health of your body and using it as a tool, your body as a tool to explore this world. Uh, please yourself, remind yourself that you are much more than how you look. Stop trying to please other people. Don't get caught up in the culture of ageism. So I know we haven't really talked about ageism, but ageism is the discrimination against someone based off of their perceived age. So that's definitely something else that is within the gay male community, but in society as a whole. So challenge the current culture, challenge the conventional norms. Um, so these are things that I suggest in terms of trying to make things better for our community. So there are signs um, that you may be experiencing poor body image and poor self-esteem. These are just some, um, there are many others that are out there that you could be struggling with. So you may be preoccupied with your weight, shape, and appearance. You have feelings of shame, anxiety, and self-consciousness about your body. You frequently compare your body to others and feel your body is flawed in comparison to others. You struggle with feelings of depression, isolation, low self-esteem, and eating issues. You use unhealthy behaviors to change your weight or shape, such as dieting, skipping meals, smoking cigarettes, vomiting, or taking laxatives. So again, how do we help other gay men overcome their issues with poor body image. Again, identifying the root causes of your low self-esteem and poor body image. Again, going back to childhood, it does plant the seeds for many adult mental health disorders. So I, I, what I do is I really work with clients to explore and develop new sources of self-esteem outside of their physical appearance. This can be meaningful things to them. Maybe it's relationships with family or friends or what they do for their career, or things outside of that, maybe spiritual practices, something along those lines. So I always try to have them look at where the validation is coming from. If it's coming from other people and not from with the, within yourself, I try to challenge that. So there's another term out there that I came across in research called gay ageism. So this is, goes back to when I talked about ageism as a whole, the discrimination against, against someone based off of their age. So as gay men age, they struggle, the struggle continues and may intensify in terms of body image issues and low self-esteem. Many older gay men report they feel socially invisible and shamed, which stems from a lack of social acceptance. So this goes back to the term mattering. Um, as, you, as we grow older as gay men, there's oftentimes kind of a door that gets slammed in our face as we age. And that's something that I really would like to work on changing that narrative so we can be a, a diverse community and not just one-sided. So this internalized gay ageism can lead to a lack of acceptance for themselves, which leads to an unhealthy fixation with appearance. The last question is, how can the gay community change the narrative of aging and body image? First, I wanted to pose this question. 
So I first ask, why would a group of people who have historically experienced so much shame and stigma from society dole out that same kind of punishment to one another? Again, going back to the term intra-minority stress, this is a real thing that's going on. It's something that uh, the term oppressed populations oppress other oppressed populations. It's very real. And there's a book called um, The Pedagogy of Oppression, which explores that even further, um, if anyone's interesting in, interested in reading that. So intra-minority stress is the stress that gay men experience as a result of perceived judgment in their social and sexual interactions with other gay men. The first step to combat, to combat this issue is to acknowledge that it, it exists. So many gay men might not know specifically, and I'm sure most do, that this is something that's really going on, that there's something that is just doesn't feel right about our exchanges as gay men. And so first to acknowledge this, that this is going on. Next, I propose, and this is just me, is to begin a self inventory in what you are doing to perpetuate these issues. Are you judging other gay men solely based on their physical appearance? Um, this can be something that you can write down and look at. And I try to have clients do that as well, because normally when somebody is self-objectifying, they're normally objectifying other people as well. So I try to look at that. We can change this narrative by cha challenging the internal and external feelings we are experiencing as we age. What I propose is to start engaging in meaningful connections, avoid isolation, and seek internal validation. We need to redefine what it means to age. It doesn't mean we have to, quote, settle down or, quote, throw in the towel. As a community, I strongly believe we need to do better. For friend, gay men of all ages, volunteer and give your time to help those in need and embrace diversity. So next I wanted to go to questions that um, viewers may have in terms of the content that I shared today. And if anybody has any personal stories or things that they like to share to kind of give light into this um, topic. I'll kind of start um, and kick it off a bit uh, for you, Greg. Yeah. It's this topic is really um, it's pertinent in my life and I've it's something that I've dealt with um, my entire life and body image. I mean, from a from a small child, um, you know, I, I can see where it stems back to, you know, being made fun of as a chubby kid in school or, you know, being made, made fun of at you know, my grandparents swimming pool by cousins because I was chubbier than they were. Um, it's, it definitely, I think, started to fester with me when I was little. Um, and it's still something today that, I mean, I, I literally, I, I avoid mirrors as much as possible. Um, I, I, when I go to bed at night, I'm clothed from head to toe and I, you know, just, I'm, I'm happy now that it's fall because I can layer more and feel more comfortable in my skin. Um, but I, I struggle with how, what are the exercises um, that you recommend to patients? I mean, to, and like you said, you know, it's cl cliche to say you have to be happy, you know, be happy with yourself first. Um, what are some of those exercises that you can do that, maybe on a daily basis, help you to make that switch. Um, I just don't even know where to begin with that. Well, I, I think you bring up a lot of good points. I think that it, it starts with identifying that it's going on first. I think a lot of people are not fully aware of how much they're fixated in the mirror or how much they do what's called body checking, which is, you know, looking at yourself in the mirror and kind of breaking down different aspects of your body. Um, and that kind of critical attitude towards oneself. So what I would challenge clients with is to, you know, we always have a negative voice kind of talking in our ears most of the time. I try to challenge that with something more positive, a more positive voice that comes to light. 
And that can be a, what are called affirmations, things that you believe that are positive about you. Um, I'm currently working with a client who has a lot of um, issues of shame and things like that. And I try to challenge these clients with looking at ways to build up and balance out that negative self-critic. So you can do it through journaling, you can do it through diary cards, you can do it through, you know, some clients actually put sticky notes on their mirror, affirmations, things that make sense to them and that they believe um, to remind themselves, because it's really about reminding ourselves that we are, that we are valuable, that we are worthwhile and that these body image issues that we have are really not really based entirely in reality and that we need to be kinder to ourselves. Thank you. Yeah. How can gay males overcome the toxic thoughts and actions about their self-worth and physical care as it pertains to body image? Sure. Um, well, we live in an age now of, of social media everywhere. Instagram, Twitter, Grindr, um, scrub, you know, anywhere you go, you're kind of almost bombarded with images of, of gay men in particular that are presenting forth a idealized versions of themselves. And it's, it's, we have a tendency naturally as human beings to compare ourselves to others. So what I would really challenge people out there listening is to kind of unplug from that for a moment and really start to look at what you're looking at. Really start to examine where you're reading, what you're looking at, what are your interests, what are you doing on your downtime to feed into that narrative of, I'm not good enough. This is not, you know, there's something wrong with me. Um, so I try to challenge people to kind of unplug from those social media outlets from time to time to get kind of a recharge and to see things from a different perspective. Um, as well as when you go out and socialize with other gay men, ask yourself the question of, am I looking at other gay men solely based off of their physical appearance or would I like to get to know somebody outside of that? Maybe somebody has qualities that I don't even know they have because I haven't taken the time to get to know them. So it's not just something that you work on with yourself, it's also what you're projecting out into this community, our community. I think it's interesting too. We, um, I, you know, I, I, I tend to put myself or be friends with, or, or I used to, um, more with people that I think kind of perpetuate the issue. Um, and over the last few years, I've kind of uh, started to really take a look at that and spend more time with my friends that are, um, you know, not as obsessed with um, body image or beauty. And I think even just putting yourself in a situation where you're with like-minded people um, helps to alleviate some of that stress and kind of put it on the back burner so that you can, you know, be more in the moment and enjoy yourself with, um, you know, the situation that you're in and you know make it more enjoyable so i you know just kind of a uh i guess an example for me like uh this summer we go out to saugatuck quite often and you know there's a difference between going to the dunes pool and going to the campit pool um the campit pool has much more laid back um guys that you know you kind of i, I think are just happy to be there happy to meet new people um, that want to chit chat. And when you go to the dunes pool, it seems like it's a lot more um, body image um, focused and it's more like a meat market. So um, just, just putting myself in a situation like, you know, spending some time at the camp at pool and meeting new people um, and taking the pressure off is really helpful. Awesome. That sounds like a great plan because it is a lot of pressure, you know, being a gay man, getting older as a gay man, you start to notice, you know, I, I can speak personally to this is that 
you're not this your value your perceived value seems to change in certain people's eyes and it's just something that that's at the point where you really have to start valuing yourself in other ways um outside of the way you look and to start to see beauty in all facets and forms and to not get caught up in this whole mentality of having to be look a certain way to be valuable our value should not lie in how we look um, because that's going to change over time and it's not something to really invest too much in i would say um, because i think if you do you're going to come up empty-handed down the road if you're not valuing other things yeah i agree with that another question for you uh, what are the factors causing gay men to have an incessant need to achieve and maintain a perfect physique? Well, it goes back to the terms of um, intra-minority stress, minority stress, self-objectification, and objectification. So objectification or self-objectification is where we objectify ourselves based off of other people's perceptions of us. So we actually form this belief system based off of our interactions with other people. So it can become very, um, very uh, jaded at certain points if we're not developing our own sort of self um, value, our self value. If we have a tendency to go out and you know, if I'm gonna go out tonight to a gay club, you know, say to myself, if I don't get hit on by five guys, then I must not be attractive. Or if these guys don't look at me, there must be something wrong with me. I would really challenge that belief system and not go out with the anticipation of having to have validation from other people, um, specifically gay men. Because I think if you, if you ride on that boat and you go down that path, you're going to use external validation as a way to internally validate yourself. And many times that can be a very rocky road because at any moment, if somebody doesn't look at you the right way or say the right thing, that can dysregulate you and make you feel you know, depressed or anxious or isolate. And really, if you start to develop this kind of dialogue with yourself that, you know what, I am good enough. I am worth going out. I'm not going to go out with the intention of seeing how many you guys hit on me. I'm just going to go out and have fun and see friends and meet new people. I think if we can individually as gay men start to do that, I think that that will begin to change the community's focus on this type of fixated body image, kind of clicky, narrative that's been going on for a while so give me tell me um if you were in a social situation and you experience somebody who's um kind of objectifying you know maybe someone else at the bar one of your friends or even yourself is there anything like what do you do as an advocate for this topic um, to try to put them off in that situation or enlighten them or educate them um, that, you know, what they're saying is really like a, term, a form of bullying yeah. and that it's not acceptable? I would, I honestly would call them out on it. I really would. I would say, you know, we as a gay community, gay male community, have been so oppressed and so marginalized for so many years, why would we, without knowing it most of the time, dole out that same type of prejudice and stigmatizing, you know, ness towards other gay men? Why would we not be natural allies? Why would we not attempt to lift each other up and support one another and love one another for the diversity that is our community? So I would, going back to your question, I would, call them out on it. And, you know, they may not respond to it in a, a way that they're, you know, able to hear what you're saying, but you're right. It is a form of bullying. And it's something that 
is unkind and it's it's not constructive. So I would definitely, you know, call them out on it and say, hey, you know, that's not cool. Or, you know, would you treat yourself like that? Or something along those lines to where they somehow realize that, hey, this is not, this is not nice. This is not kind. And I, I agree with you. I think, you know, as you, um, when you objectify your, or not objectify, when you, you know, you're hard on yourself about body image, it also in turn makes you hard on other people um, as a, as a, you know, a side effect. Um, and I think something that I have been doing or trying to do lately is when I find myself, um, you know, being judgmental of someone else, not that I'm, you know, maybe saying it, um, I try to find something that I can compliment them on. And, you know, if it's, you know, their sense of humor or, um, you know, something about their personality, something about them that I enjoy, I like, um, even if it's just saying, you know, I appreciate them as a friend, um, kind of like taking my mind off of that focus and focusing on something else I find helpful to, in that situation as well. Wonderful, wonderful. Um... There's a term in psychology known as negativity bias. And I don't know if anyone else out there has heard of that term. Um, but what it really speaks to is that we, our brains function kind of from like a primitive angle to where we were like cavemen and things like that to search out for something that's negative. We search out and spot the thing that's negative. So maybe there's 99 positives but there's one negative. Our brain is naturally gonna to focus towards the negative. So like you said, you know, I intentionally try to pick out a compliment for them. And that's something that you have to do to retrain your brain to not always assume the negative. And so maybe it's all about being intentional really and intentionally saying to yourself, I'm gonna say something nice about this person or I'm going to be kind to this person even if you don't like them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I've kind of monopolized the question and answer period. Um, Nathaniel or Zach or Robert, do you guys have any questions you'd like to ask Gregory before we wrap up? Well, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate uh, you guys taking the time and spending some, uh, some of your lunchtime with us. And uh, if you'd like to get in touch with Gregory, what is the best way that they can uh, make an appointment with you? I would um, contact the CRSH website or to go directly to calling the front desk. So I can give you guys that number. Yep, I have it. It's actually 248-399-7447 uh, or the website is crsh.com. Yes. Um, thanks again, Gregory. We really appreciate your time and um, enlightening us on the subject. Oh, no problem. Thank you guys for everything. Have a great day, everybody. <laughs>